securing Active Directory domain services. Since your Active Directory domain controllers are the brain trust of your Windows domains, it stands to reason that they should be protected from malicious threats using whatever methods you have at your disposal. So in this video, we're going to talk about some things that you can do to ensure that your domain controllers are more secure. Although I will admit up front that we won't be covering a few of the things in this list in this video, since we already have other videos that cover many of these things in a lot of detail. So these things that you see here highlighted in yellow, they're all covered by themselves in their own video. So I'd encourage you to go and check those videos out, although we will briefly discuss each of them here now. So firstly, with like a lot of the security features we've already looked at in Windows 2008, you can install an Active Directory domain controller in a server core version of Windows 2008. Although that's not something that we'll be doing in this video as we'll cover server core builds in other videos later on. Now new to Windows 2008 is the ability to create read-only domain controllers, which as the name suggests, a read-only domain controller is read-only, meaning that it only stores read-only copies of the forest objects inside its copy of Active Directory. And this is great since it will still provide all of the functionality that clients require, but it will be more secure since it can't be written to by malicious users or even well-intentioned users that just make bad configuration choices. Another thing you can do is to put the DNS role on your domain controllers since this will allow you to create Active Directory integrated zones. Now integrated zones allow you to not only replicate DNS data alongside your Active Directory data, but also take advantage of secure dynamic updates, which only allows authenticated domain clients to update DNS automatically. We're also going to talk about group membership, specifically how to delete or disable unused user and computer accounts. We'll see how to rename the administrator account, how to enforce password requirements, and disable the guest accounts. In Windows 2008, we now also have the ability to create what Microsoft call fine-grained password policies. And this lets us create separate password policies and apply them to an OU, for example, or a group of users, or even a single user, and have that policy apply only to them and the default domain policy apply to everyone else. Then we'll discuss other authentication methods that you can use other than just the regular old password that we know so well. And then finally, we're going to talk about how we can manage our service administrators. And these are users that have permissions to modify and manage Active Directory. In other words, those users that can make changes to Active Directory. All right, well, the first thing we're going to talk about is group membership. And this should probably go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. One of the most important things you can do to secure Active Directory is to limit group memberships, especially to the powerful groups, to only those people that really need it or can be trusted. Now, by reducing the number of administrators that you have or the numbers of people that belong to powerful groups, you're then limiting the number of people that can purposely or accidentally make catastrophic changes to Active Directory, as well as the number of administrator accounts that an attacker could potentially compromise. So if your Active Directory infrastructure has been up for a while, maybe it's time to audit who belongs to the administrators and other powerful groups and remove anyone that doesn't need that level of access. Now, if they do require additional privileges for specific tasks, then use delegation to grant them those privileges only, and that'll lessen the risk from potential attacks. Now, another thing you can do to further secure Active Directory is remove everyone from the Schema Admins group. The Schema Admins group is a special group in the forest root domain that allows people in this group to make changes to the Active Directory schema. Since it's pretty rare that you need to make changes to the Active Directory schema, normally you'll only need to do this when you're installing specific software. So it makes sense to remove everyone from this group altogether and then only add back in accounts when you need to perform some sort of task that requires the schema admin rights. Now, once you've made that change, then remove the user from this group again. So by removing everyone from this group and then adding them back in as required and then removing them again, you minimize the chance of an attacker gaining access to the Active Directory schema, 
which could be, needless to say, devastating to you if that happens. Now, it's also, of course, going to prevent an unsuspecting administrator from accidentally changing the schema by installing an application that needs to make changes, since that administrator would manually have to go and add themselves to the Schema Admin group first in order to make that change. So the accidental defense goes out the window, so it puts the responsibility on the administrator's shoulders for any problems. Now, another recommendation is to rename the default administrator account. And I know that the more seasoned people listening to this video might be thinking, well, how does that help? Any attacker that knows their stuff will still be able to find it pretty easily by its SID. And that's true, they will. But novice attackers probably won't know this or know how to find it, so it's still a good deterrent anyway. So to rename the administrator account, it's as easy as going into our users container here and then right-clicking on the administrator account and then choosing rename. Although, I'd suggest making this change from group policy as it's less likely that another administrator is going to come back and change it back again if you happen to make that change using a policy. So we'll go and click on Start and we'll go to Administrative Tools and we'll launch the Group Policy Management Console. Then on the left here, we'll expand our forest, we'll expand Domains, and then our domain here, winstructorlab.com, and let's right-click on our default domain policy and we'll choose Edit and that'll fire up the Group Policy Management Editor. So under the Computer Configuration heading, we'll expand Policies, then we'll expand Window Settings, Security Settings, and I'll just move this slider bar across here. Then we'll expand Local Policies, and we'll select Security Options. Now on the right-hand side here, we have four policies that are of interest. The top two allow us to disable both the administrator and guest accounts. And the other two here allow us to rename the guest and administrator accounts. So if we wanted to rename the administrator account using group policy, we'll right click on rename administrator account and choose properties. And then we'll define this policy setting. And then we just need to enter in the name that we'd like the administrator account to be called. Now, if we wanted to disable an account such as the guest account, We'll right click on guest account status and choose properties. Again, we'll define this policy and then we can set it to disabled. So as you've seen, disabling and renaming both the administrator and guest accounts is a pretty simple thing to do. Now, the other thing you can do to make Active Directory more secure is to delete or disable any unused accounts. In a large company, people come and go and often these old accounts just don't get removed. And this poses a nice target for an attacker since there's no one using the account and therefore there's no one to report any problems. So we'll go back to Active Directory, Users and Computers, and we'll use the query feature to find out all of the accounts that aren't being actively used. Now, I'm not going to discuss this query feature in any great detail here since we do have a separate video dedicated to this topic. But at the top here, you can see that we do have this Save Queries folder and if we right click on it and choose to create a new query, and the first thing we'll need to do is give this a name. So I'm gonna call this one old accounts. And then we'll click on the define query button. And down the bottom here, we can search for accounts that haven't been used for a specific period of time. So 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and so on. So if we select any of these and then click on okay, and then okay again, in this window, you'll be presented with a list of those accounts that meet the criteria. And from here, you'll be able to disable these accounts or delete them altogether. Now, since I don't have any accounts that meet this criteria, obviously my list here is blank, but in a network that's been around for a while, you'll probably find some accounts still hanging around. Now, the great news about this feature is that now that this query here has been created, it means that you can come back here in Active Directory Users and Computers at any time Simply click on the query and it'll show you all of those accounts that meet the current criteria. And you won't have to go and create it again, so that's going to save you some time. Administrators themselves should also be governed by multi-factor authentication as well if possible. So in addition to their username and password, anyone that uses a privileged account should also need to provide some other form of authentication. 
Authentication is normally categorized into three separate areas. Something that the user knows, such as their username and password, or a PIN number, something like you'd use at your ATM, or a passphrase. It could be something that the user has, which is a physical object, such as a smart card or a cell phone or a security token, and also something that's a unique attribute of the person, such as their fingerprints or their voice or a retinal scan of their eyes. By using a combination of these other authentication methods for your privileged accounts, it makes it much harder to compromise your security since no longer are we relying on just a simple username and password. Now, obviously, some of these authentication methods will probably be out of reach for the average small company, but things like fingerprint readers, they're pretty cheap and they work quite well nowadays, and they're a great addition to your overall security plan. So whilst regular users can get by with their username and password, for your administrators, and this includes enterprise admins, domain admins, the schema admins, and pretty much any group with the word admins in it, they should be governed by a combination of these different authentication methods. Now, the final thing I want to talk about in this video are your service administrators. These are the people that manage Active Directory and are authorized to make changes to it. Now, one of the first things you should do to ensure that managing these administrators is made as easy as possible is to separate them into their own organizational unit. So in our Active Directory Users and Computers console, I'm going to right click on my domain here, winstructorlab.com, and we'll choose to create a new organizational unit. And I'm going to call this one Service Admins, and we'll click on OK. Now we'll go up to the View menu, and we'll choose to turn on Advanced Features. And then we'll right click on our Service Admins OU and we'll choose Properties, and then the Security tab. Now you won't see this Security tab if you don't enable the Advanced Features like I just did. So if you don't see six tabs at the top here, then make sure that you go and turn the Advanced Features on in the View menu. Now, Notice here that by default, we've got a bunch of different groups already inheriting these permissions to this OU, so we're going to have to remove most of them first. So since a lot of these permissions are being inherited, we'll need to fix that first. So we'll go and click on the Advanced button, and we'll turn Inheritance off by unchecking this box here, and then we're going to remove the existing permissions, and then we'll need to remove these accounts, so we'll select them all and we'll click Remove. And now we'll go and click Add, and we're going to add back in only a few of these accounts. We're going to add back in the Enterprise Admins group. So we'll locate them there. We'll click OK and OK again. And up here, you can see that this is applying to this object and all descendant objects. And that's what we want. We want to allow the Enterprise Admins group full control over everything in this OU. So we'll click on OK. And now we'll click Add again. And this time, we're going to go and add in the Domain Admins group. And there they are. We'll click OK, OK again. And we're going to grant them also full control to this object and all descendant objects. We'll click OK again. And then we'll click Add. And we're going to look for the Administrator account. So we'll click on OK. And they're going to have the same permissions as well. Now, there's also one other group we want to add in. And that's the pre-Windows 2000 Compatible Access group. And there they are, so we'll click on OK. But we're not going to apply this group to this object and all descendant objects. We only want to apply this one just to user objects. And we certainly don't want this group to have full control. We only want them to have list contents, read all properties, and also to be able to read permissions. So we'll go and click on OK. And OK again. And OK one more time. And now we have a Service Administrators OU where we can store all of our administrative accounts, and only those accounts will have access to make changes to this OU and the objects inside. Now, this sort of administration also allows you to deploy a very strict password policy and even audit policies, so you can lock down these administrative accounts and audit what people using these accounts are doing. So you have a paper trail, so to speak, of what people have done when you need to go back and find out who made certain changes. Now, once you've applied a lockdown policy to this service admins OU, this is one situation where blocking policy inheritance is a good idea 
since you don't want another policy object overriding any settings that you've defined at this OU. So we'll go back to our Group Policy Management Console. We'll click on Start, Administrative Tools, and launch the console. And then we'll go and expand our forest domains and our domain. And although we haven't actually created a group policy object and linked it to this OU, so we expand that, you can see there's nothing linked here. We'll assume for the sake of the argument that we've gone ahead and done that. So at this point, we'll want to right click on this OU and then choose to block inheritance. So now the more secure policies that we've assigned to this OU will be retained, even if other higher level OUs offer more relaxed settings. In this video, we've looked at ways that we can further secure our domain controllers and more specifically Active Directory. Now, I would suggest that to further what we've talked about in this video, that you go and watch the other Winstructor videos on read-only domain controllers, DNS, fine-grained security policies, and server core, as each of those videos are relevant to what we've discussed in this video now. Securing Active Directory is one of the most important things you can do in your overall security plan, since Active Directory is at the very heart of your network, and if it's somehow compromised, it can bring everything crashing down around you. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and would like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.